What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas and Mini Machines and today we are playing a 2v2 match on the map Vault in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. Everybody is picking random but the last samurai is actually pre-picking the Gondor faction and I got to play as usually once again the Isengard army. My ally is Gondor and we are against one Gondor we know that for sure and the Gondor is at the top right side. Okay, 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 okay. So we're gonna open with a Uruk pit this time because against good factions you want to have your Uruks ready to fight and later on we also need to spam lots of pikemen you know and i'm not gonna show mercy guys uruks they have no mercy in their hearts let's pick up the war chant. that's the one power point you want to always choose in every single situation when you play isengard and we need to try to catch those units okay Oh, okay, I think they are double gone actually guys, okay, I mean, that's good actually for them, because that's a huge map, the map Vault, and on this map the cavalry can actually be quite significantly better than infantry, because, oh, they have the elven wood, hopefully my ally is also having elven wood, so can cover this, <laughs> otherwise, I mean, oh, okay, my ally covered actually, that's good, so we can keep fighting, now we have more bonuses, and the enemy has no bonuses. If you don't know, the Alvin Wood denies the entire experience and also damage and armor leadership from the enemy units. If we lose this mill, it's gonna hurt us a lot because we don't have anything else. And that's the risky part about opening with a Uruk pit because you heavily rely on the resource income from those Lamry mills. And if you lose them, it's pretty much GG. Okay, so also the other... <laughs> The focus though, they are to be wanting me guys. <laughs> Do you see this? It's so annoying. That's so tilting actually. Okay, unfortunately we won't be able to keep this Uruk pit around for a long time. Oh boy, this is gonna be tilting. I mean, if he can defend this settlement, that's gonna be actually good enough, but I need the assistance from my ally. I mean, I need as, as, as OAS, you know. Where was Gondor when Westfold fell? I mean, Vault fell. Not Westfold, but it's also including Vault in its name. Let's take the farm down. I think we can fight this, no problemo. My ally is creeping in the meantime, but he should be definitely helping me out a bit. Creeping is good, but... Um, not in exchange for me to lose a lot, you know? I mean, I think we are fine. We have still two medals outside. And we should be able to recover this a little bit. And what we need to do eventually is we need to creep now with the next war chant. We need to creep ASAP to get a bit more power points and also especially the resources from the creeps to recover. And that's one of the reasons why actually why I am a big fan of opening with double furnaces. But double furnace opening would mean that we wouldn't have a chance to defend us anytime soon. We would lose literally every single settlement outside. It's fine though, it's fine. My ally is coming, but, you know, unlike the wizard, my ally is too late. We took down the farm, that's good, that's pretty good actually. And now, we can also take down this farm. But we're, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna keep all of them together and use the war at the same time. Let's get one more. We have now in total three Lumber Mills outside. That's good. Um, very soon the money is gonna start kicking in. And remember, each of these wood, uh, each of these Lumber Mills are also giving us the wood bonus, making our structures later on cheaper, which will give us the chance to fill up the base with additional furnaces very, very soon. But you don't want to stop recruiting Uruks. The reason is simple: because by recruiting Uruks, we will passively level up the building to level two, which is the requirement for us to recruit some Isengard pikemen. Okay, we can creep actually both of them at the same time, the work layer and then the goblin layer right after. And our opponent has like a hobbit there. You know, that's why we couldn't, we, you know, capture this for us. But that's unfortunate though, <laughs> that's very really annoying. But now we will have the chance to recruit some pikemen just in time to protect our remaining settlements and also put pressure. Like, when you play Isengard, guys, it's very important for you to understand. You are an aggressive faction. You don't want to be camping, especially against good factions like Gondor. I mean, against Rohan, it's a different story because then you cannot play super aggressively. 
by sending out the pikemen forward because Rohan will have the chance to recruit these peasants from the farms outside and the, pike, the pikemen are gonna get demolished. So the peasants are a hard counter to the pikemen. Oh, oh I wasn't paying attention. When you are not using the porcupine formation, uh, the units are gonna get still knocked down on the ground. Against Gondor, you want to put pressure on the farms. You want to keep sending Uruks to every single location. Offense is, in most cases, the best defense. I think the, the Gondor Knights, they can't do much more because they were badly damaged. Let's try to take as much map control as we potentially can and hope that our ally is going to do just fine. And when you play Isengard against good factions like Gondor, you don't want to give them too much time either, you know? We want to siege them very, very soon. So, on the map Vault, you have plenty of settlements, including those outposts, which we can capture later on, build siege works, go for the ramps, and try to go inside the genes as soon as we can. Okay, our base is looking now much, much, much better, as you can see and tell, and we will never stop recruiting pikemen. That's going to be our primary army and our primary force for the Isengard faction in this game against Double Gondor. Because they are, go they are both going for cavalry, which is pretty standard, and uh, they should be rushing my base very soon. I mean, if, they, if I would beat them, I would be rushing this Isengard base non-stop, because I'm the only evil faction player. And it means uh, the pressure is going to be definitely on us 24 7. Okay, we killed the hobby, that's good. Very good. One more furnace, and then. Map control, map control, map control, map control. Oh, 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 he's not paying attention! But he was so lucky that they were in the watch wedge formation. This way, my pikeman couldn't uh, you know, catch them entirely, but he has already blades, as you can see and tell. Um, but very soon he will be poor. We will hurt his economy, you see. Both the Gondors are on my side. And yeah, let's build. Um, recruit, I mean, let's recruit more and more pikemen. We cannot have enough pike. Oh, he's creeping at our side of the map. We need to use Warchant and try to deny him that creep. Come on, come on, come on. Warchant, let's go, let's go, let's go. Please, please, can we kill this level 4? That's gonna be huge if we can kill him. Oh, it's gonna be close, please. Oh, that's tilting, dude. Uh, that's really, really tilting. Okay, my ally covered the land. I mean, I've also land if, you know, if I need it. But there is no reason for me to use land in a spot like this. When you want to cover land, you want to use it on key points. So basically points or areas which might be fight on later on. You don't want to use it randomly on a random spot nobody cares about. Like they did. Because if I, you know, if I capture this outpost, the land will disappear. If you don't know, if you put land on a settlement, like for example outpost, camp or castle, the second the outpost, camp or castle has been purchased or bought by a player, the land, doesn't matter if it's tainted land or elven wood, it will be disappearing from the ground. So you don't want to use it on those spots, unless you have to. Keep them back. The Urukai will not be stopped. But I think we are in a good spot. We are in a good spot. We are in a good spot. We have also lords on the field. And I think we need to start capturing outposts now. The bottom one, but oh, there comes the beast rush. Oh, I see multiple Gondorites coming to our side. But I think the pikemen, they're gonna be just... I mean, I don't want to lose the Uruk Pit. Losing the Uruk Pit at this stage of the game would be a horrible thing. Because then we need to recruit at bare minimum two more crossbowmen and also uh, one Uruk to get it back to level 2. We can fight this, I think. I mean, if you don't know the highly leveled Gunner Knights, if they have like a couple of levels on them, level 4, level 5, we can actually melee fight um, our pikemen. So the way you want to handle this is just before you trample, you press S so they don't trample them. And then in the melee range, in the swift swords, you can engage on the pikemen. You see that? That's how he did it. He did actually a very good job. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I should stop explaining stuff about this game because the people, they are learning, you know? I mean, the players I'm playing against are actually long-time players. They played this game for many, many years, just like I am. And both of them, both of my opponents are actually my friends. Like, I know them now for, what, many, many years? And it's still, I mean, we got to know each other from BFME over 10 years ago, guys. And we are still friends. And that's why I love BFME games so much. Because here, you can actually meet strangers and turn them all into your friends. 
can cover this one. This one is going to be important to be covered because it's right in front of the Urukwet. The only problem with this aggressive playstyle is there is so much we need to pay attention to, right? We have like units spread out for the entire map and uh, the good thing is we get the vision. So we see him coming now to our, to our castle with like lots of Gundam Knights. That's gonna give us some preparation time to be ready for the defense. You see three Gundam Knights, one of them is level 5 and we need to be ready. Now, if he has actually the Ranger Special Summon, it's going to be bad for us. Hopefully he doesn't have it. Oh, oh, we can give them Blades and fight this. And we can kite until we have the blades, and we can fight after. Okay. Okay, we need to be ready to this. Okay, you see, he has no chance. With blades, the pikemen are hitting like a truck. Okay, but in, in, we need to demolish the buildings. In the sentry towers, they are actually giving so many power points to the opponent. That's why you need to make sure to demolish them before they hit the 50% HP mark. Otherwise, if you demolish, it doesn't matter because your opening will still get the experience and also the power points. In the sentry towers, they give a lot of experience and also a lot of power points. Oh, there comes the ranger special. Okay, my ally is actually coming. That's very good. I can use Warcher now on his horses. This way, he can engage on this, um, you know, rangers. It's going to be quite nice for us. To defend this very very good just nice timing from my teammate very good oh but we might lose the uh, armory actually hopefully not okay we need to get in position to defend this if now blades our units are gonna hit very very hard and most of his units can't actually attack the you see the body blocking oh he lost a lot but he could he didn't lose a battalion yet okay now we need to make sure to purchase all the remaining upgrades like the heavy you know the forge can't even talk. The fire arrow and also the banner, and then we can demolish this right after. We cannot win this fight. These are level six. Oh, what are those level? We can give them blades. You wanna fight this? Level six Gondor Knights, you will lose. Let's pick up the field of fires. Against Gondor, you don't need freezing rain because Gondor doesn't rely on leadership bonuses, unlike Rohan or Mordor does. Oh, we killed the levels. That's massive. That's very good, actually. Nice, nice. Co I mean, do the Uruk Pikemen. Remember, this is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Uruk Pikemen. Their spears are long and they are hitting like a truck. And the spears are not the only long thing <laughs> in their body. You know what I'm saying? I heard. I heard. I don't know. I can't confirm. I just heard it. Okay, now look how many pikemen we have on the field, boys. That's crazy. We have also Farami from our ally. But now we know what time it is. It is time to purchase our outpost and start sieging the opponent. Now is the time for us to shine. Now is it... Oh, I see a Gan of the Grey. Move! Gan of the Grey is actually popping off. Holy guacamole, what? I think the player... Um, this is the player who just used the uh, rangers on us. He doesn't have the power points now for Gan of the Red. Let's get the, capture the outpost. But you see the amount of pressure we are putting. Yes, we're going to lose the Pikemen, but it's okay. Remember the evil factions, as they lose units, they will gain power points. Which means in long terms, if this goes like this for a couple of more minutes, we might be at the point in which we can even summon Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. Now is the time to combine. Oh, he has towers, but we can build. We can build. We have a level 3 pikemen. Each level on the pikemen makes them even to much more like a nightmare situation to the enemy Gundam Knights. Let my ally know. Uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. The Twitch channel means a lot. Hey, guys. Oh, that's going to be quiet. Um, I mean, it's risky. Oh. Yeah, now it's actually annoying. Dude, my lords can't sprint. Like, my lords, I can cover this if you want to do this. I can cover this, no problem, Gondor. You, doesn't, you don't stand a chance. And um, we have massive changes coming up, boys, for the upcoming version, including a couple of new maps. And hopefully, later today, I might be able to play one of on one of the new maps. And then I will also, of course, upload this to YouTube once I get some games done. And I might also stream a couple of them during the weekend on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. If you haven't followed me there, I would love to meet you in my next live stream, guys. Would really be epic to see one of you guys 
no, not only one of you guys, all of you guys, you know, showing up into the next live stream. I would really appreciate it. Okay, let the siege begin, but I believe he has some defensive expansions around the fortress, which makes maybe eventually those... Yeah, here's Trebuchet expansion. I think um, we need to go around it, because when this Trebuchet expansion hits, it hits very hard. And our, you know, it might one-shot our ram. Look, oh, look, you see the amount of map control we got? But that also means lots of dedication to the attention. So we need to pay attention to every single spot. I mean, basically, of course, everything you do has an upside, but also a downside. The downside of having lots of map control is obviously that you need to pay attention to every single spot, every single time. But uh, on the bright side, you get lots of money. Like, money, 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 money. We are about to become Alan Mask of the Battle for Middle Earth 1. Okay, so... Um, oh, but this guy is rich, dude, what? Like, he's building even more expansions. How much money does he have? I thought he actually crippled his economy because we actually keep harassing him all the time. Now the combos, they need to be careful, you know? Oh my goodness. Uh, dude, I need to make Ballista. I need to make more Ballista, more Ballista, and eventually later on we're also gonna make some explosive mines. So we can actually blow up the... You see this red glow animation for Lourdes to level up? Right through me, right through me, my ally, right through me, right through me, I wanna use War Chant. Okay, let's use War Chant now. For death and glory. I mean, not really, but, you know, but my lord, there is no such force. Oh, I see Gandalf, we need to cripple him, but they are hard focusing my lords. Lords, be cripple. Oh, he may die, lords. Die, lords. Die, lords. Die, lords. I don't care about you anymore, lords. You disappoint me every single time. Now we are screwed. <laughs> Oh, uh, we need to be a uh, micro, 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 micro. Oh, he's committing. I don't have to clean the land yet, so it's good for us. He actually miscal I mean, he didn't miscalculate. We microed around because he was running into us. And when we moved to the side, like we did. Oh, but this guy is slow. Can we finish him? Does he Hopefully he has no heal. Hopefully he has no heal. Hopefully he has no heal. Faramir finished him from my ally. Faramir is finally showing his quality, my dude. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Map control, map control. We also need to recruit very soon a Saruman to show them what a real wizard is made of. No offense, Gandalf, but you are not in my team. My ally has to help out to this spot. There is also a Faramir from the opening team, so he might be able to kill it. He lost Lourdes, unfortunately. But it is... I mean, the thing is, if you, if you lose Lourdes, but in exchange you got to kill the enemy Gandalf, that's a trait you should always take every day of the week. And again, we can spread out even more because now, as we are talking, we are creating pressure on one of the Gondor bases. It means um, they are kind of forced to defend us. It also gives us the chance, and macro is more important on a map like this than micro is. Macro means you get more money, and your opponent get less, get less money. So it's a win-win situation. I mean, I have my land if it's necessary, but I think that's from my ally. I don't know. Is this from them or is this from us? I don't know. I can't confirm or deny. I'm actually clueless, but I can see my units glowing. I'm still not... I'm kind of insecure about that. I don't know. I didn't pay attention, guys. Is this the Gandalf? Oh, that's our Gandalf. Okay, from my... <laughs> you see the minimap, boys. You see how much we spread out? Take a look into the minimap, please. Oh, there is an outpost. Thank you very much. We're also going to be able to destroy this for free. Look, our money, man. We are money maker. And remember, we have also the field of fires, which means 70% more money from the farms or, you know, lumber mills outside. Let's protect the outpost. Let's kill, destroy this trebuchet. <laughs> Slowly but surely. There comes the enemy engagement. What is he doing? The last charge, just like in the, you know, Osgiliath charge from Faramir. I mean, yeah, congrats, you killed one of my ballista, but is it really worth it to feed me even more power points? Because we need only 10 more for the Balrog, oh my. Yeah, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it obviously kind of forces you to pay attention and you are much more vulnerable because, you know, your opponent has the chance to attack you from multiple sides. 
He might lose this. Unfortunately, but with the explosive man. Okay, it's time, boys. It's time. It's time. You know what time it is, don't you? You know what time it is, don't you? It is time for the boom boom situation. Make it boom boom, please. Please. And kaboom. Let's go. And, but there is one more coming. Hey, you know what? I will kill all these two expansions from you, my friend. I will destroy them. Look, our Lamy Miller is level 3. We, we destroyed his outpost. But let's reclaim this one. We should be in a good spot. I think now, after destroying the parts of the wall, I kind of opened like a massive gate for my ally. And I can just war chant his units later on. And he can, you know, he can also just go inside now. He has too many units. He can just go inside and deal crazy amount of damage to the economy of this Gondor. Go, go, my ally. Go, 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 go. We have 12 power points in the bank. Let's also, we can also make siege works here and start sieging the other Gondor player at the same time. There is a Gandalf. I see him. Oh, oh, my ally might be able to kill him. What are my pikemen doing in the meantime, though? These lead together. I mean, this guy has so much money, he's actually able to build so many trebuchet expansion on top of the wall. How is this possible? Guys, we have every single outpost besides the one which is under control from our ally. <laughs> like, we are controlling pretty much, legit, the entire map. You see how many pikemen I've spammed since the beginning of the game? Oh, but it's okay. It's okay, I don't mind. We have too many of them. You can kill one of them. I can, you know, you can, you can have them. I don't mind about that. We have our outposts here, uh, you know, mills or settlements next to the enemy castle. The pikemen everywhere. Everywhere. I think if Saruman in the films, in the two towers, if he would let me command the Urukai army against Helm's Deep, I would have crushed them. I would just place a couple of pikemen in the porcupine formation to the roof in which Gennav and Elma came from, and they would fall just into my trap, you know, <laughs> and then ride it down into my pikemen, and then you will collect power points, and then for a surprise in Helm's Deep against those weak peasants, I would even be able to summon the mighty Balrog on their feet. Imagine Balrog flying to the Helm's Deep. <laughs> Imagine this. It would be kind of epic, but also it wouldn't make any sense. But it would be epic. Okay, now I think we need to commit, guys. We have like three pikemen, two combos. We have Lourdes, level 3, unfortunately, only not level 5 yet. And we have Saruman. And we are only 7 power points off from the point in which we can summon the best summon in the game. Oh, okay. Oh, what is, what? Okay, that's our Gandalf, right? I think so. He can fight this, no problem. We have. Oh my goodness, he's coming. We need to make sure to demolish buildings. They might actually look to, you know, fish some power points. Okay, they demolish the buildings, very important to deny them the experience. Oh, there comes an eagle summon from the opponent. And our ally might actually lose his Gandalf, unfortunately. Okay, now we need to go and do something. Let's go inside the beach. Inside the castle, every building now, as we are talking, is shooting. Everything is leveled. Oh, you wanna, you wanna do this, Eagle? Look how fast we can kill him with this much, this many combos with fire and war chants. I mean, the Eagle cannot survive this. He will get one-shotted. We can also use Fireball on one of the trebuchet. Do it, Saruman. Phew, nice. And this eagle thinks he can do something against us. Eagle, you are dead. And we have 15 power points now in the bank. Eagles are actually giving you so many power points if you manage to kill them. That's why when you summon eagles, when you play Gondor and you want to summon eagles, you want to summon them to a location in which you know that you achieve more than you will give more. So basically, you should try to get more power points from the eagles than you will give to your opponent, if this makes sense for you guys. What is this, boys? Is this an eagle party or what? Is this an eagle party or what? It's an eagle party. Kill the eagles. Come on now, kill the eagles. I mean, he might lose the Lourdes if he is aiming for it. And he's going for it, yeah. There's nothing I, I mean. It's okay, we have Padrock now. Let's hope that they don't have EOD. You know, they just summoned eagles, so I don't think they have EOD yet. We need to finish this soon, though. Because from this point, the opening will be able to collect, you know, 
we cannot get any more stronger, right? We have like the strongest form. We have the 20 power point collected. And if you don't finish them, they will eventually get also to the point in which they can summon EOD. And remember, they have double good faction. That means they have two, eventually later on, two army of the dead. Which could be definitely game winning. Okay, I think this piece is done and as we have every single outpost under our control, this should be the GG for the White City. The White Gondor player will be defeated. And, and, are they gonna call it or are they gonna fight? I mean, is the other guy gonna fight until the end? That's the question. Samurai Killer has been killed. <laughs> <laughs> Samurai Killer is no more. Dude, uh, against the power of Isengard, boys, there can be just no victory. Victory is at hand. I think they're gonna fight. They, they want to fight until the very end. Defend the camp. I think they want to fight until the very end. I mean, he want to fight until the very end. But look our money, dude. Guys, you was, you see how much how impactful the map control is. We were just able for like in a second to buy the castle after destroying it. The opponent is fighting until the end, but we will just see him once again very very soon. We have double siege force inside the second castle we just bought. He can also cripple this Ganov down. And he will not be able to move unless he's close to EOD. And even if he's close to EOD, oh, he's leaving it. Okay, did you well play, guys? I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more, more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out. And as always, guys, there will be no dawn for men. There will be no dawn for men. Peace out.